Hello, Panthere, and welcome to our new video. Today I will show you one of my discoveries, late discoveries, when I, which I did when I was studying at high school, and it deals out, it deals about uh, probabilities. Um, the theorem I will present you is called the projection theorem and it relates uh, multiple and uh, integrals and the integrals with uh, less dimension and uh, this uh, formula is uh, uh, as I've uh, discovered later well known so it's not so discovery as rediscovery okay so let us begin let us begin by this motivational example. You have a square and you have two points in it. What is the every uh, the square is unique of unit length? Yes, unit. This diameter is one. This is one. All sides are equal to one. And the question is, what is the average length of, uh, or what is the expected length of two randomly chosen points on this? in this um, square okay one way to compute that is uh, to use an average integral yes to expect it uh, for expectation and this integral because these points every point has two degrees of freedom yes it can lie on x axis and y axis and uh, two point two degrees of freedom and the other one has also two, so that means that you have to have uh, quadruple integral, yes, four integrals in the row. Okay, well, that's very, that's very sad because it might be very complicated, and there is a way how to do it differently to write it as a single integral. The, the idea I is that you will write it as a single integral and uh, uh, instead of finding probabilities of the positions you will write it as expectation of L uh, where L is a length and rho L is some um, density function probability density function which has which uh, has to exist, yeah, it has to be in existence because uh, clearly, clearly there will be plenty of points which are very close together but there will be some average and so this god still has uh, some maximum and then the points very far away are not so also not so frequent so this is just some function um, using probabilities this row is defined as this way probability that uh, L L is uh, our length uh, but length as a random variable is greater than or there should be I think less than yes less than T plus DT minus probability that L is greater than T is equal to this, so this is the definition for that. What is basically happening that you have this uh, this domain called omega x, you have these points, and you construct from this domain another domain omega y. This uh, this picture is one dimensional, but it can be any dimensional. Doesn't matter even more dimensions but this is not what is meant for and this is our new function from now it will I will denote it by Sigma uh, another example is uh, uh, where I can illustrate it illustrate this principle is here this is uh, one dimension less so you have uh, let us imagine that you have a segment of length 1 and 2 and you, ch uh, you choose two random points what is the average length between them average distance expected distance let us uh, write a distance function and you can imagine that, that you have two axes 
uh, like positions, yes, random numbers, and for each there is unique probability, and the probability density is one because uh, this point can be anywhere with probability one doesn't matter, and this point doesn't the position of the second point doesn't depend does not depend uh, on the position of the first point, so this is one, and the function I will like um, illustrate it as. Uh, as this surface above this plane, xy plane. And what is going on here is that you are just interested, interested in uh, regions where L is between L and L plus delta L, or dt or something like that, or dt. But this region is the same. But this region, yes, this. But but uh, you have to find the region on x y plane, and this region will define then. Will then define. Because probability of uh, these two events, th this event happening, this is some event, is the same as. Uh, uh, there should be uh, less. I'm sorry. It's the same as area of this. Oh, there is like this. This is depicted as a, as a quarter of a circle. But never mind. This big area minus this area. So it's this strip, and area of this, this strip, has to be this because of the definition of row has to be this. So, moreover, if you have a function of the area of this, if you have a function of area. You can then um, get a row t as well because it's just a der derivative with respect to t because so after that you get strips yes St strips okay another example is that you have uh, um, you have to compute some moments which are defined but uh, in this way. But uh, let us say you have to calculate, you want to calculate moment where alpha is equal to 2.3, for example. This might be very complicated uh, when g, uh, which is function of, uh, let us pretend function of x1, x2, x blah blah blah, xk, this can be very complicated. And the one way how to, how to deal with that is find a function for g as a random variable and then integrate it as a one dimensional integral yes one dimensional integral okay so here is that um, proper projection theorem I have told about and is basically the law of conservation of probability what does it tell us is that the integral of uh, let us pretend first that phi function is identity so that means that there is an, an analogy why I will uh, again pretend this is just uh, one dimensional but never mind this is just one dimensional this manifold y there is there are two domains yes then the length given by points x the expected number over length is uh, multiplied with probability that you are choosing that point. Uh, in the case rho is equal to 1, it is the same as the unit square, but rho can be any, any function, yes. Uh, for example, the points in the middle of the square can be more probable, and so on and so on. This differential is uh, just a small proportion of the manifold, yes and so this is just a volume element and this uh, whole thing this row times uh, row a times d differential of omega x this is called differential of probability or probability measure uh, to be more specific in the context of measure theory uh, because uh, probability of uh, for example event y here uh, happening in this d omega y region uh, there is a picture yes you have the omega y region and this this part is d omega the probability of this happening is rho uh, the density 
at this point uh, location where the omega is chosen times actual size of this so this is the definition of rho and the d of omega uh, within p yes pr probability itself okay well uh, another interpretation of this uh, theorem not on the length um, of length because this is just uh, this would be just y and so this is the number of length is using um, something like uh, money and pay, uh, you have to pay for something yes let us imagine that phi is a cost of something some quantity per uh, per of of this blob yes of this manifold and you can get it by integrating uh, integrating over that manifold but let us pretend or let us imagine that uh, what are we counting for example is number of uh, hits of uh, balls and balls uh, position of balls are uh, maybe probable or not but their position or probability of uh, of, uh, of position in this manifold will be rho x, this is a probability density function. Then the total number of hits, for example, it's a function where it's occurring, it can be different, and how many balls are there, and uh, how large is the region where I am computing. And it should be the same if you if you uh, degenerate this manifold and then compute it so this is, this is very similar to defining what uh, change of variables will do to integral except this change of variables uh, also works for uh, any dimensional integrals not for the same dimensional so this is very interesting and uh, it can be very useful uh, there is also differential form of this rule because I have not specified what, what omega x is and you can choose a, only a part of this manifold and if you do that, if you just use uh, uh, the, um, part of manifold and um, let, us, let us choose uh, a mani part of manifold this, uh, for, example, for example red area uh, which after mapping to this new new manifold omega y uh, uh, will map to some d omega so that means that uh, I will integrate with uh, x uh, x on x manifold but only on the region where y of x this is the function of uh, which translates from this to here uh, will will put points from the rest region, red region to this region, so this uh, and this should be, and well you can see clearly here that this has a pretty nice meaning this is just differential of uh, this this uh, this manifold, so this this will be just this right hand side without any integral okay, so this is it and from this you can recover original uh, Omega, if you like, or for something else. If omega, if y is a one-dimensional manifold, then that's very, very easy. Uh, and if x is also one-dimensional manifold, you can and uh, phi is one, you can write this is this is phi. This is one times this of dx, and this should be equal to because this is dx because this. This uh, this is one-dimensional. This is equal to uh, because, because we don't know what the the omega is, but this is the same as d dx. Yes, yeah, this dx and d omega are related as as the such way. It's equal to rho y dy. So this is the same as uh, uh, consideration of probability. And uh, let us also pretend all functions are uh, increasing. Yes, so we can um, use this formula. If you divide it by dx, you get this differential equation. Maybe you are familiar with this equation, which uh, uh, maybe more most of you, uh, which are uh, skillful in probability and, and statistics, use to find uh, density function for a new variable with uh, which uh, can be 
found uh, from the previous one by some functional transformation, yes, by some function, okay. So this is this is the example, you get x as first variable and there is function which maps the first variable and the second variable and the goal is find uh, the density function for this. And this is from the law of conservation of probability or the so-called projection theorem, you will get the desired result. Okay, well, what is interesting is that if you, uh, if this is one dimensional and you will choose uh, phi function, because phi uh, has not be zero, yes, you can choose it, and it's the similar as the rule of lazy statistician, it's the same, same, phi can be anything, and if you choose phi to be delta function of y minus y prime, where y prime is some constant, here you will get exactly uh, psi, uh, oh, uh, sorry, sigma of y prime, and there is y and y delta, and uh, this is uh, y x minus y prime, yes, uh, or the same as y prime minus this because this delta function is symmetrical, so you get uh, immediately the formula for sigma in terms of delta function, but delta function in more dimensions it can be very complicated to com compute anything uh, hardly ever hardly ever okay so again this is this was the derivation this is the rule of resistance statistician by the way so the rule, which is the same in the first dim in this first dimension okay a uh, very important special case is this uh, when the second dimension is uh, uh, first uh, is 1D, yes, then you can write the the sigma y as this uh, derivative, as this derivative because from the definition of probability and why it's the case, well you can you can always you can write this integral and where the region is less than y, uh, this is less than, in not some, in some differential this is less than y where y is given and you are integrating this function which is known uh, under this region it, it, it corresponds to this uh, large semicircle and the area of, of, of it uh, but weighted by, weighted by this uh, row function also and if you compute that and then perform derivative which can be very easy if you maybe it can be easy maybe, uh, and then this is equal to differential of y, and you can always, always, this domain, uh, this domain can be replaced as different uh, integration in r to the nth power, so that means all region, for all uh, directions, all places, and there is, uh, this is heaviside theta function, that means that this heaviside theta function is 1, when this is greater than zero and it's uh, uh, and it's zero when this is uh, less than zero, okay. So this is only one when y is greater than y x uh, x vector. So this is this is this is the condition, and this is the same as this. And if you perform derivative, now you can uh, differentiate it only this because this is the only function. This is constant of integration. So no need to use Leibniz rule here, and if you do that, you will get the derivative of heaviside delta function, which is the obviously Dirac delta function. So you will get this very nice looking formula for derivation of this delta Dirac delta function. Uh, interestingly, it can be extended to any dimensions, but uh, it's uh, it the the interpretation might be very more complicated to understand and grasp. Uh, another like usage is that uh, there is a convergence and moment. Uh, there is uh, alpha convergence estimate. If you have this uh, g uh, to the alpha power, and you are computing that uh, uh, average value, which is one over uh, the measure of whole manifold times this integral. Yes, uh, d omega. And uh, this is equal to I don't know which is equal to, for example, uh, for for example I have chosen square root of l, which is the maximum distance from this. So we are I'm interested in moments, 
of this uh, distribution for the length uh, of from one point to another and uh, you will get this and this function has a maximum so it can be uh, estimated that this is less than there should be less than maximum of this there is some maximum in maximum in in psi and from the mean value theorem for integrals there is also psi when there is this equal sign some psi so this is equal sign maybe equal sign and this integral is very easy to done now and this is 1 over 1 plus alpha so that means that means that this is uh, this goes to zero like this but uh, we uh, actually we don't know this term so it's not like this exactly but never mind this is very interesting there is okay we can recover our original uh, sigma y uh, or uh, the the uh, the the final function yes we can recover the function in uh, one dimensional function for for example for the length uh, using projection theorem and uh, I have said the one uh, way is to um, put uh, the function phi to be del their delta function and actually this is the only way to do that but uh, there is another like uh, method to find this the first one is moment array method you will you will define you will define some moment uh, with respect to some some parameter and uh, you will use this uh, a projection theorem to give this and you can then extract the information from alpha from every alpha and extract this what the the sigma y look looked like okay for example the very oh very convenient uh, very convenient choosing of such function it's exponential function in the Fourier transform if you um, substitute in for phi k where k is this parameter a minus y k you will get this integral is equal to n k but, but with uh, uh, this uh, projection theorem it must be the same as uh, uh, Fourier transform of it yes uh, we have just uh, uh, we have just put this uh, this form of equation over there and if you if you use this uh, because this is this is uh, for a transform of uh, sigma now so this is this and there is this left hand side okay but we know how to recover psi from psi hat because we know what uh, the inverse Fourier transform look like so that means that psi of sigma of y is equal to 1 over 2 pi times this integral and this original phi hat which was this moment I have, I have put this into substituted this into this formula and then you can integrate this you can change order of integration because this is whole uh, manifold yes and write this as a as a direct delta function because we know that uh, integral of exponentials will give us uh, delta function so this is another formula which we have talked about and get uh, two times before yes so twice before so no problem with that formula to understand what is more interesting is that you can uh, compute first this transform which may be um, for example easier than this delta and then perform this integration so what we have done is we have split the problem of uh, delta finding the delta function integral into finding first Fourier transform and then the inverse Fourier transform on the different domain. So it's a similar as finding first this integral, yes, this this integral, this integral for the, the surface or, or something like the surface and then differentiate it. So this this is similar but this is uh, performing integration instead of differentiation. Okay. Uh, uh, there, there are some attempts to do this in different way, but I failed. So this is like nonsense, and there is another nonsense because I thought that a translation invariant would be can result in something, but uh, it led us uh, led us me to some other 
other conditions but this uh, will give me no no interesting information so maybe maybe this equation is very interesting if you choose uh, phi to be very specific it's uh, gaussian so it you can use integration with respect to gaussian for example but never mind uh, if, and if you use this for phi this is very easy i've done it we have done it uh, actually uh, right before I wrote the, the I, I showed you the project theorem by words, but this is just by substituting in, but no necessary need for this to have uh, this to compute Fourier transform because this is the solution is just is just this integral again the same. Uh, what can be interesting is that you can uh, perform some num numerics on this and you compute it with uh, exchanging on your computer with exchanging delta with some with some rectangle with very small height and then you can extract it uh, this this sigma okay for some approximation you can choose for example Gauss Gaussian with variable uh, width and you can then put the limit width is going to infinity it might be also very interesting integral, which can be also uh, much more sim much more like simpli It can be simplified. Yes, uh, I don't know. Uh, it depends which kind of functions or function row and the region are integrating uh, uh, with or are integrating on. You are integrating on. Well, so I hope you enjoy this video. There are some. This is just. This was just. Uh, like introduction to the theorem, projection theorem. I will show you the projection theorem again. I think it's a very, very, very important theorem which says that uh, the probability is conserved or it means that the expected value of, of uh, some function phi does not depend on a description of coordinates or description of where they, they are lying in. So this is the another interpretation of this theorem. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it and maybe next time in a new video. So bye and goodbye.